Today, answering questions that you guys have been leaving. No biting. That was actually really cool. Alrighty guys, welcome back to Venom Diaries. I'm out here in the front of the Venom Center with me mate, the big red belly black snake and big Bruno the brown snake. Anyway, today's episode is all about answering questions that you guys have been leaving in recent videos. So we're gonna answer all them. We're heading out into the park area to start off with. The first question is, do we have any other animals here that are venomous other than the snakes? I think we should go and check that out right now. Let's go. Alrighty, and as you can see right behind me here, we got Bluey and Bingo here this school holidays. But if you keep following me this way, we're going to see the Komodo dragons. Right here, let's go inside. Welcome to our Komodo house. This is where we house our two adult dragons. Big female here, this is Daenerys, and then uh, Kraken is next door. So we're actually going to take Kraken for a walk out here in the main park area. So come with me. Kraken, our adult male Komodo dragon, and he's an absolute ripper. Komodo dragons are venomous, all right? So they've got a venom gland just down here in the lower jaw. All right, so um, that can cause major bleeding around a bite site. It'll also cause the blood in that area not to be able to coagulate. So the animal will continue to bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed. And uh, it's extremely effective, all right? Every single scale that you can see here is an osteoderm, like what's on a crocodile's back, all right? So they're a floating bone plate on the surface of the skin and they're like built-in armor. And especially these big males, um, they do a lot of combating in the wild. This fella is obviously very quiet. Um, we spent a lot of time with him since we got him as a juvenile. Like he came to the park and it was this big, come all the way from over in America on a plane with his sister. And uh, yeah, we started harness training within about maybe four or five months. He used to sit on his shoulder at the lunch table when he like literally was this big and then uh, obviously he got bigger. And, uh, but he's an absolute champion, probably the best Komodo in captivity anywhere in Australia. And so Kraken here isn't the only venomous animal here at the reptile park. We've also got to look at funnel web spiders. All right, so keep coming with me. Um, wait, there's Hugo, actually. Hugo is the funniest fella you'll ever meet. He's a Galapagos tortoise. He's the biggest tortoise we have here at the reptile park. He is 175 kilos. He's uh, about 76 years old now. <clears throat> So pretty young, really, in the tortoise world. Now, Hugo done himself a bit of a mischief about two years ago, all right? We got him a good-looking Sheila who's next door, but she's still a bit too small for him. She's only 60 kilo, he's 175. Anyway, he couldn't get to her, so no biting. He couldn't get to her, so a rock in the enclosure was the next best thing. And uh, he wore himself a hole in the center of his shell, because he got so excited, he thought it was a girl. And uh, we had to put him in sick bay for a little bit, give him a bit of a, a patch up under here, but since then he's been okay, all right? She will get paired with him. She's right there looking at him at the moment. She will get paired with him in a couple of years time, but she's just too small. But have a go at him, would ya? So Hugo's actually worked here longer than me, over 35 years. And it's a question I get asked a lot, is when did I start at the Reptile Park? It was all the way back in 2006, all right? So next year marks 20 years for me. Um, I haven't been here that whole 20 year period though, all right? So I've done a total of about 11 or 12 years here, and the rest I've been up in far north Queensland playing with crocodiles and more venomous snakes. But I've been back for three and a half years and I'm absolutely loving it. All righty, we are here at the spider container. So just behind me, we got these two big containers uh, and there's 5,000 funnel webs in here. All righty, so you'll notice they're like fridge type containers and we have to have them like that because spiders are so sensitive to temperature. Um, so it's all temperature controlled in here. That helps with this. We're gonna head on in. Chloe and Emma should be in there. Just do a... Hey, how are you going? Coming in, there's uh, no escapees at the moment? No escapees. Alrighty, so we have Emma and Chloe here, they're working hard. Another very commonly asked question is, do we milk anything here other than snakes? Emma? 
You want to tell us the answer to that one? Yes, we do. So not only do we milk the terrestrial snakes for antivenom, we milk the Sydney funnel web spider. And that antivenom could be used if you're bitten by a Sydney funnel web spider, one of the other 40 different species of funnel web spiders, a mouse spider, and any of those medically significant um, ground dwelling spiders here in Australia. Yeah, cool. How many are you milking at the moment? Uh, at the moment, we're going into season. So we've got about 50 that we're milking at the moment, but when we're in season, 300 a week minimum. And we've got 5,000 babies in here that we're feeding each fortnight at the moment. So you spend your days just smack banging here? Yep. Um, what have you got in front of you at the moment? All right, so at the moment, we are feeding our 2022 babies. So these are the babies that we hatched in 2022. We come on through, have a look, again. see if there's any spider molts. So oh. A molt there with its fangs attached. Whoa. So Got it. as they grow, they shed almost like a snake. So it just comes off, like, it's got like an exoskeleton. And then you can actually see the shed fangs there as well. So, so how old are these guys? Three. Uh, yeah, these guys are coming up to three. So uh, now is the time that they're going to turn into boys or girls. Yeah. All right. And so the past week you've been getting some egg sacs? Yeah, do you want to come see them? Yeah, let's go have a look. So once a year the females produce an egg sac and it's quite a sensitive and delicate process this, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, they're super, super, super sensitive. Like really sensitive. Look at them the wrong way, they'll eat their babies. And Emma's even got them housed in a separate room in the container where we have to be super quiet. After you. So um, this is our breeding room. We saw it a couple of episodes back actually, mm. but um, now it's full breeding season. So it's really, really exciting. In here we have it all climate controlled. We've got uh, carpet on the floor and everything to reduce vibration. No one goes in here unless I let them in here because any disturbances, as we mentioned, she's gonna eat them. But if we come through here. Eat her own eggs. So uh, originally, if we've got spiders, because we only milk the male funnel web spiders for that breeding program, if we got a female in, we just release it, but we know they breed around the time of year that the males are wandering. So November through to April, the males are out looking for females. And that meant that every female we got in from say, I guess January onwards could potentially be gravid. So pregnant with eggs. So what I started doing was keeping the females in these layer boxes here and then given the perfect temperatures, when it hits that springtime where they normally drop them in the wild, I bump the temperatures up in here, give them heaps of food so they think it's an amazing time of year to have their babies and voila. So over here I've got a bunch of egg sacs. So when they drop their egg sacs, we don't know much about them at the moment, but this one here is full as a gook, no pun intended. Um, and so I pulled these from the mum the other day. We leave them with mum because nature knows best. So she'll look after them, she'll turn them, she makes sure that they stay nice and clean. And then they get to this point where they're super puffy and that's because the eggs inside have actually hatched internally and they kind of just cruise in there for a little while. They're like little jelly babies and then the exoskeleton will start hardening. These little ones here, we can actually candle them and you can see the little legs moving if you want to check that out. It's pretty cool. Let's do it. All right, let's go turn the lights off. So the movement is really, really subtle. Pop your light down here. And then this is our little gooby egg. Well, so you pick it up. Yep. And then if you pop it directly on here, it's so subtle, but in there, the tiny little babies have hatched and you can see just little tiny flickers of movement and that's their little legs. They're like jelly at the moment. Their exoskeletons haven't hardened, but you can see them flickering and moving in there. There's a little leg you can see just here. All right, let's go turn the lights back on. Well, thanks for that. That was actually really cool. Yeah, um, I'm cool. super excited to see those babies. Um, we are gonna go back to the Venom Center, so follow me and I'll see you, Emma, a bit later on. Thanks, thanks again. Bye-bye. Alrighty, so now we're going to head back into the Venom Centre and I'm going to answer all your big snake questions. Let's go! Alrighty, so we're back here at the Venom Centre. Follow me, we're going inside. We're going to keep answering these questions. Alrighty, so I'm just uh, putting some snakes away. I've got Annika working in here today, so she's been cleaning brown snakes, um, 
And these are all extreme caution brown snakes. And you'll see, especially these first two are extremely reactive. Mate, this snake is fired up. All right, so yeah, this is one of the uh, brown snakes. Ooh, Eastern brown. I'll try and get him back in there. Come on, mate. There you go. Alrighty, have a go at this cracker, would ya? He is a cheeky fella that um, can be extremely reactive. You watch when I put him in here. The one below me is already, oh look at that, he's coming back for a bit of a look. Come on mate, back in there for me. He's just looking for his hide box and then um, he'll probably cruise. But have a go, look at that. So he's making himself look bigger at the moment. He's shocked, ooh, big strike. I'll let him be. Alrighty, so now you know from the bite episode where I talk about being bitten by the King Brown that I'm actually allergic to antivenom. Um, and people have asked, what do we do now if I am bitten again? It's actually pretty simple for the doctors because they know that I'm allergic. All they do is they will give me adrenaline before they give me the antivenom. So they'll load me up with adrenaline and uh, that will basically counteract that anaphylaxis. Um, so I'm able to receive antivenom straight away. So like to most people, it seems, I guess, um, a little bit crazy that I'd continue handling venomous snakes knowing that I'm allergic, but they, the doctors can treat it really well. So um, yeah, adrenaline um, infused into the drip with the antivenom and that's it. All right, so it's, pre it's pretty simple. Uh, another question that we get asked a lot is what happens if I swallow venom? All right, so if I have no ulcers in my mouth or in my stomach, no abrasions, my stomach acids are sorted out, no worries. There's, there's literally no dramas. Don't try that, obviously. Um, but yeah, that's the difference between venomous critters and poisonous critters, all right? Hey, this is why we got him out. This is the fella that got the sinker removed out of him um, a few episodes ago. What is that? To sinker. He's actually due to have his stitches come out in the next week or so. So um, he's healed up fantastic. Um, but yeah, so the difference between venomous critters and poisonous critters is venomous animals have either fangs or you know spurs like a platypus to deliver the venom directly into either your lymphatic system or your blood system. Where poisonous animals, let's say like cane toads, um, they excrete it on their body and you can ingest it for your skin, your eyes, your hands and so on. I can get it in my mouth and that's how you will get the poisoning. All right, so a little bit different. Oy, oy, oy. There's even a, um, whoa, there is even, and most people would not know this, there is a, oy, 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 a venomous primate. All right, good. Called a. Wait. Where are you going? Oi. <laughs> Old mate is on fire. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, there's a venomous primate, all right? So, literally a venomous monkey, it's called a slow loris. It has a venom gland right there. And when it's under threat from predation, it literally licks the venom and then bites the predators, and that's how it gets it into it. Crazy. Nature is wild. Alrighty, let's go milk some snakes. So, follow me. One question I got asked uh, in one of these recent videos um, is what about if someone presents to ER and they don't know how to, they can't describe the snake, they don't have a photo of it or whatever, do the doctors just give them like a broad uh, antivenom? Well, there's a few things they can do before they would do that, but there is a polyvalent antivenom, which is this one right here. So it's a mix of everything from brown snakes and black snakes and type heads and death adders and tiger snakes. Um, but what they would do before using that, um, if they have specific antivenom available, as in species specific, they can look at bloods, they can look at the area the person it was in, and they can look at symptoms because the different species will create different symptoms, all right? 
And then if they can't put the, the nail on the head, they will literally give them polyvalent and be fine. Okay, so yeah, that answers that question. Um, now, I've got a couple of King Browns to milk. All right, so I've got two of the bigger, naughtier boys to milk right now. So, uh, next question. How long do snakes live for? All right, so the different species will live for different um, time frames. Let's say a King Brown like this fella right here could literally live 20 to 30 years, all right? Um, and that's in the wild and captivity. There are recordings of really big pythons, like big reticulated pythons living for 40 to 50 years. Um, I know of a cobra in a zoo over in America that lived for 56 years. All right, so that's pretty crazy. Um, now, bear with me, I'm just gonna get, wait, wait, wait. just gonna get this fella on the pin and pad here, like so. Now, next question is how long is the venom dangerous in a venomous snake that's deceased? All right, so it'll depend on a couple of things, where he died, how he died, and so on, but like a snake that's just been killed, it's as toxic as if the snake's alive. Oh, look at that, he almost bit over the vial. I thought he was going for my finger then. Literally just lunged straight up over the vial, look at that. There was reports of a snake that was found like in the desert that like basically sun dried after it died uh, from decades before and they took samples from inside its venom gland. This was over in America. And when they rehydrated that, hydrated that venom, it was like it would just come out of the snake. Just, and, and they reckon that snake had been down for 40 years. All right, so it was like this mummified snake, a uh, rattlesnake in, a, in an old mine shaft. All right, um, pretty, pretty wild venom. Yeah, it, um, it's, it's crazy stuff, all righty. And this guy is not letting go and he's got me wrapped up by the leg, so I'm gonna have to let him go in his enclosure. This is a typical King Brown. All right, thank you, big rig. All righty, last question for the day. How long can snakes go about eating? It's actually really wild. I'm talking they can do over 18 months, all right? Providing they got good body condition, um, they can go crazy periods. We even think that inland taipans can go two years with no food. Annika is actually feeding snakes right now. She's gonna feed our display death adder, fastest striking snake on the planet. Go right in closer. Almost touch him on the face of it. Yeah, nice. And so on the menu for our snakes is generally rodents, sometimes quails and, um, and, and little chickens. But yeah, generally the rodents, so for the adders, they're eating mice. The biggest snakes, like the king browns and taipans and brown snakes, they're eating rats. Um, and that's pretty standard for them uh, in captivity or in the wild, all right? So, so yeah, two years we think inland taipans can go about food. That's crazy. Because they go for periods of drought where it doesn't rain out there for like three or four years, maybe longer. So food's really scarce. That's why we think they're so venomous, all right? So when they find something, they know they're gonna kill it very quickly, all right? All righty, so I've got one more king brown of milk. Um, hello, mister. Ooh, getting chunky, this fella. I might spin him around here, get him on there. And voila, like so. Oh, man, I never get over doing this, I love. Milk and snakes, all right. Get him on the vial. Big bite. Oh, have a go at that. For a day ruiner, look at that. <laughs> He's still going too, He's still dripping away. Good set of fangs, mate. You gonna let go for me? Ripper, how's that? Life-saving stuff. Get him back in his enclosure. Ooh. Hey. Alrighty, that is going to be it for this episode. Hope you guys liked it. It was a fun one. I love answering lots of questions, so keep them coming. We'll do another one like this. Uh, not too far away, alright? Anyway, guys, you know the drill. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all for the next episode.